Hi everybody, Eric Vale here, and today's subject is movie mistakes and how I hope I didn't make them too. I'd like to thank Semiraiko, I think is how you say your name, for suggesting the topic. So just to prove to you all, I will listen to you sometimes. So really, before I get into this, it's important to note that uh, there's a lot of effort that goes into making just one film. And it's really, really important that you all know that the type of effort that goes into making a film from not just one person but from all the people involved in a film is heart-wrenching and uh, it requires a lot of sacrifice and a lot of effort and to prove that I'm going to show you something that I've had to do recently on a film that I'm moving forward into pre-production on so uh, let's cut to a clip of that real fast All right, backwards. <laughs> So, you see, I don't take lightly the fact that I am going to talk about mistakes that other people have made in their films. The fact is that a movie mistake is kind of like a flaw that you see in someone you love. So if the movie is a wonderful film, I kind of see it as a flaw that you find in someone who you love. So if you love somebody and you find a flaw in them, then sometimes those flaws become even cute. You know, you actually like the fact that this person does something that might be a little annoying from time to time. Just like when you watch a movie, you kind of look forward to that part where you know there's a plot hole, or you know you're going to see a crew member in the background, or there's a continuity error. I'm going to get to all of these here in a second. But sometimes, that's, that's a good thing. It makes you almost love the film even more. The converse to that is that in a bad film or a film that you don't like the errors become magnified and just like in a bad relationship it doesn't mean the person is bad but their flaws become bigger and bigger and bigger until it's all you can see so when you're looking at a movie that you don't like all you see are those flaws that being said I'm going to run through a list and I'm only going to use the films that I like just to prove the point that these are films that are awesome but every film has problems. So let's get started. Continuity errors. You see these kinds of errors all the time in film and the reason is that films aren't always shot in chronological... In chrono <laughs> and it's normal to see that uh, somebody's hair isn't positioned the same way every single shot and that's because those scene even one scene might not be shot on the same day or sometimes even in the same week month or even year depending on the production schedule of a certain movie a good example of this is in Die Hard and in the original Die Hard John McClane goes to that touchscreen desk when he's looking for his wife's name in the office building in Nakatomi Plaza Century City and uh, what he finds is in one scene, he reaches down, boom, and looks at that touch screen, and his, his wife's name, Holly Gennaro, is right there. And then in the next shot, that name is spelled completely differently. So who knows why that happened, but it's probably because those two things didn't happen on the same day. They weren't shot on the same day. And because it's just a slight misspelling, it's just one letter changed. It's something that only people who are nerds, like me, who want to watch and who've watched Die Hard a million times would notice. So, uh, factual errors. These are errors that happen because somebody didn't exactly do their research or maybe they're just doing what they're doing in the film for dramatic effect. Case in point, in the movie Castaway, which I adore, at the beginning of the film you've got a little boy carrying this uh, FedEx package and he's running through the streets of Moscow and what he ends up doing is he runs past some famous Moscow landmarks like uh, St. Basil's Cathedral, I've got some notes here, uh, Moscow State University and the Big Stone Bridge. To run past all of those landmarks in the amount of time that it seems for him to do so would have taken him actually about four or five hours to do that. Um, and I think it was even snowing and, and really crummy weather there. So that's the kind of errors that happen factually speaking. Special effect errors. These are some of my favorites because I'm a huge special effects guy, mostly the old school special effects because CGI sucks and is for suckers, for the record. But when they used to actually do special effects on set instead of in post-production, don't get me started. Here's a good example. In Raiders of the Lost Ark, 
when Marion is taken in the basket and Indiana Jones chases her through the streets and that basket is put into the back of a truck and then the truck explodes and it knocks over on its side. When the truck falls over on its side, you see this huge thing sticking out of the bottom of it. Now when I was a kid, I watched this movie I don't know how many times and what I ended up seeing was that thing. And I kept thinking to myself, why is there a huge pole sticking out the bottom of that truck? And I didn't care because I kept watching the movie and I loved it. It's Indiana Jones, what are you gonna do? Well, I watched the making of, you know, years and years later and found out that what they ended up doing was packing the top of the truck with dynamite, putting a telephone pole inside of it, blowing the dynamite, which shot that telephone pole out the bottom and knocked the truck over on its side. Well, the camera was on the side that exposed that telephone pole. And there's some smoke around it and everything, so it's not so noticeable, but you see it if you watched it 157 times or however many times I've seen it. So uh, that's a good effect error. And uh, you watch enough movies, you'll see those types of errors all over the place. Plot holes. Plot holes are a problem. I mean, really, if you've got plot holes in your film, you can kind of ruin the viewer's experience. Now, that's not always the case, but a lot of times it is. I'm gonna give you some examples of how a plot hole is not going to ruin the film for you. Speed. In speed. Okay. Yeah, it's speed, but it's fun. Shut up. Uh, at the end of speed, when uh, Jack decides to speed up the train, uh, if he could speed up the train, why didn't he slow it down? Right? Yeah, okay. In the Shawshank Redemption, after, spoiler alert, uh, he escapes the prison. Uh, Andy escapes the prison through the hole in the wall behind the uh, picture, right? Well, the picture is tacked on all four corners to the wall. He couldn't have done that if he went into the hole. He literally could not have reached out and tacked those four corners down behind him. Now, could he? Crew errors. Now, these are the kinds of errors when a crew member accidentally shows themselves on frame for some reason or another. And it's usually because uh, they didn't see it in the editing process or something like that. I know that this happened in a ton of different films. Uh, most notably, and again, I'll reference the movie Speed, you've got uh, Jack running alongside the bus. And during that point, he's at the beginning trying to tell them to not go over 50 miles an hour. And as he's running, you can see a cameraman running alongside the bus with him in the reflection of the bus's windows. So yeah, that's editing errors. Okay, so my favorite editing mistakes ever are in one of my favorite movies of all time, The Goonies. At the end of The Goonies, everyone say it with me. What did Data see inside the caverns? An octopus, right? He even says it right at the end of the film. Okay. No, they cut the octopus scene from the film. It exists. If you get, uh, I think it's the Blu-ray version, you can actually see the octopus scene. And then you will understand why they cut that scene, thank God. But why didn't they cut that from the end of the film? I mean, it makes sense kind of that he's lying and it's a joke and it can kind of be sold. But for the most part, it just kind of makes you go, huh? Just like a moment right after that when Mouth turns to Steph and says, thank you for offering to save my life? When? When did she offer to save his life? Well, the fact is, there was also a scene that was cut when they were standing on the plank and she said, hey, you know, I, I can, you know, hold my breath underwater and all that kind of stuff because what you didn't know is that she's a swimmer, right? Now to go ahead and prove the point that I was making at the top of the video about how movies can be like relationships that you have with people where, you know, the good movies have flaws, but you like them more even because of them, but the movies you don't care for so much and their flaws are amplified. The movie Signs. Why don't I like it? Because it sucks. That's why. And here's why it sucks. So spoiler alert. God, why do I have to say that all the time? Anyway, spoiler alert. At the end of the film, we find out that these aliens uh, have traveled all of the way across a vast expanse of space to come to our planet because they need to use us as food. Uh, and these people, keep in mind, are 75% water on a planet that is, you know, about the same percentage, 75% water or something like that. And it just so happens 
that water is what kills them. I wouldn't travel, you know, a hundred light years across the expanse of the universe to go to a planet that was 75%, you know, hydrochloric acid to eat beings that were 75% hydrochloric acid. So there's that gigantic plot hole. That's just one of them. Just one of them. Oh, here's another one. Did you know that these aliens who can build spaceships, they can hide in plain sight, they can, you know, disguise themselves, kind of like the Predator, I guess? I don't know. And uh, they apparently have spaceships that also can disguise themselves so that we can't see their spaceships. But they have infiltrated our entire planet from someplace out in the galaxy. However, you can trap them in your pantry with a piece of wood. But you can see how a movie that's actually got a lot of awesome in it has some problems that just get so big, it makes me mad. But that being said, I, I have to go back to the sacrifices that I know Shyamalan had to make in order to make that film and all of his other films as stinky as some of them are. And I think back to, to, to this. Give me your hand, leave that oh, oh. So in a few months, you'll be able to tell me if I made any of these same mistakes with my film Chariot as I, you know, talked about here today. But hopefully, it'll be the kind of mistakes for you that I've felt for the films that I love. Uh, hopefully, it'll be a film that you love. If you have any suggestions, please just stick it in the box below. That sounded dirty. And, um, can't think of anything else for right now. All right, you know what to do now. Tagline. <laughs> so what do you think? Is your new job? Bring her around front. Bring her around right in here. She can pet her with you. You go pet her. Say good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Good. That's how you do it. Hey puppy.